Today, I will be presenting on women in Islamic terrorism. For our agenda, we will be going through the role of women in Islamic terrorism, recruitment techniques by both men and women, social media and propaganda, data and graphs, information gaps, and conclusion and future implications. The roles of women vary throughout Islamic terrorist organizations. Some of their roles include recruiters and propagandists, which are mainly online. Another role is caretakers, which involves a lot of work to run the organization, including cooking, cleaning, material making, such as flags and weapons, and caring for the children of the members of the group. Another role, financial advisors, which involves handling all the funding that goes in and out of the group, as well as funding for weapons that go in and out of the group as well. Another role is teachers, which they teach the young children the extremist ideologies of that specific group. They also usually teach the children to condone violence and create violence once they get a bit older. Tactical, the female roles have increased from behind the scenes to upfront sacrifice, such as suicide bombers, hijackers, hostage takers, and combat soldiers. Previous research has shown that 15% of suicide attacks were conducted by women between 1985 and 2006. The women group of Boko Haram, an African Islamic terrorist group, consisted of two-thirds of the group's suicide attackers as well. For recruitment techniques, many of the recruitment from and to women stem from psychological as well as financial reasons. For men, they recruit women by promising them a better life, money, love, such as marriage, higher roles in the group, and a sense of belonging to the group, which associates with social identity theory and psychology. Once female members are recruited, they usually are disappointed when they arrive to main regions such as Iraq and Syria because they realize they were scammed by the men for their work and affiliation of the group. For women, they become members for obvious reasons such as religion or affiliation such as being a family or friend of current members, but they also have techniques for recruiting women and the main way is online. These women use false propaganda pose as men, and they also use social identity theory to create a false sense of sisterhood in the organization. The women also use empathy theory for children in psychology, which showcases that there is a safe space for their children once recruited into that specific group as a member. For social media and propaganda, the main social media networks used for recruitment and propaganda are Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, Kik, Ask FM, Instagram, WhatsApp, Tumblr, PalTalk, and more encrypted messaging apps. Research done by Clausen in 2015 shows this graph of a Twitter network, which is one network alone, of female supporters and wives of Western foreign fighters. This is a huge networking graph, and because technology has advanced over the last five years, Networking online may only benefit female terrorists and their affiliated groups and members. For data and graphs, these graphs showcase the increase of physical combat conducted by female terrorists. Figure 1 shows the increase of female suicide attacks from the years 1978 to 2012. Above and to the right, you can see a table of female suicide attacks per group and their percentages. Figure 6 displays the total Islamic affiliates in Iraq and Syria, where 25% consist of women and children taken from research in 2018. For more research from 2018, it shows that 20% of all Western recruits to the Islamic State are women. For information gaps, most research conducted on female agents in terrorism are repetitive, similar, and not quite up to date for 2020. There is also a lack of de-radicalization programming and research done on women members who are arrested for their affiliations and crimes. Research has also shown that women are more likely to get lesser jail time than 
male terrorists who are convicted of their terrorist crimes. More research may be done on U.S. psychological biases on female agents to better improve the security of the U.S. and security blind spots in the homeland. Conclusions and future implications. According to research, women in Islamic terrorism have always been around, but their roles, such as combatic and recruitment, such as online, have been increasing over the years. The U.S. can also use more research done on female terrorists, mainly in Iraqi and Syrian regions, to mitigate future threats on the homeland. The increase of online users during the COVID-19 pandemic may also allow both female and male recruiters to gain members and support for the terrorist organizations like never seen before. Vetting systems around the world, but especially in the U.S., may allow security blind spots due to the cognitive biases on female terrorist agents. Here are my sources, and thank you very much on the briefing of women in Islamic terrorism.